This week on Twende, we continue our journey in El Geo Marquet. We meet up with other travelers on the valley floor. Indo na tumianga tu. Terrain zote za Kenya hii gari imepita. Itapita. Itapita. I get to chill with some new friends on the road in Karena. Then we get to play a game called Going Up Sambalat on the most exciting road in Kenya. It has all the challenges. Steep incline. Poor visibility. Falling rocks. But it also has a good side, like roadside falls. Crazy hairpin turns. Apo kicheza mbaya, ni game over. And we get to drive inside an indigenous forest. This is Sambalat. Today we continue our journey from Murkutwa, the small Marakwet center at the foot of the El Geo escarpment. As we leave town, we run into a police checkpoint. There are security forces all over as there had been a raid two days earlier. That is the challenge of visiting this area. It can be calm one minute, I love you the next. It is the wild, wild west. The police assure us that security has been restored and it is safe to proceed towards Stott, the next center on the highway. Just before getting to Tot, we run into these people clearing the bushes near the center. The raiders had been ambushing people in these thickets. Most of the villagers have come to support the clearing. We get to Tot safely, then cross the permanent Embo Boot River, which flows down from the Embo Boot Forest. But even in a place that has sporadic incidences of violence, there are those who can't resist visiting this region. So you can go to Turns out that Jane has been on the road with us, but we never noticed her. In a roar, there she is passing behind us as we interview Modama. Then as we were heading up the escarpment in a roar, she was the one in front of us. Sometimes it is not the size of the dog in the fight, but the fight in the dog. We have one last river to cross before we can consider ourselves in the safe territory, the Karena River.
The river has no bridge, but it is usually safe to cross for small cars and even motorbikes. There are springs on the banks and pier. Unaweza osha shati yako kitoka shule. We finally get to Karena Center where there is a lot of traffic on the road. After kilometers and kilometers of rough road, finally, we're at the tarmac. Hey. So we're just about to show you one of the most dangerous roads in Kenya. Nasi is to bandit. We'll, let, we'll show you. But before that, what any pumps can I'm a best to go up? Let me be a kulalia. Amaji. One at Wakevo. Kevo Nandapi. Kevo Uni James. Ule pale na ndevu pia na itwa Njora. In Kenya, there are some impressive roads like Thika Road, the new expressway. We have the Kerio Valley descent from Cap Barnett. We have tunnels and impressive bridges, but if you think you have seen it all, then you haven't seen Sambalat. This road feels like going to heaven as it disappears into the clouds. The official name is C664, but to locals, it is known as Barabara Ya Sambalat. The entire road is 48 kilometers to Chesoy, but the crucial part is 13 kilometers. There's no vehicle that can go up a straight incline of 13 kilometers. So the road, naturally, had to be carved from the hill to make the gradient a bit more gentle. Karena, where the tarmac begins, is 1,324 meters above sea level, and the highest point is Maron, 2,520 meters above sea level. In 13 kilometers of road, the altitude rises to 2520 meters. That is an average altitude of going up 1.2 kilometers in 13 kilometers. Aya, sawa, najua mtaki kupigiwa isabu, nataka tu kuona barabara. Fine. We decided to approach the escarpment from the Karena side as this would involve the climb. Most accidents on this road, surprisingly, happen when vehicles are going downhill as new drivers usually underestimate the gradient of the incline. We get to learn that the latest accident was two weeks earlier when a premio hit a guardrail on the way down. Fortunately, Kunamtoliumia. The best way to approach this road is to think of it like a game. You start at level one. First, the incline at the beginning is crazy. You constantly find yourself having to shift back to gear one, even for the mighty cruiser. If your vehicle has enough power and does not overheat in the first three kilometers, then you get to level two the mist. If the road scares you then, you can always eat a mango. It is a good way to remember this road. The mist level comes with surprises. They are falling rocks from the escarpment walls. Sections of the road are covered by these rocks. Mm -hmm. 
Then the reward starts to roll in. We run into this waterfall just on the side of the road. All the waterfalls we have come across on this shore have always been in a hard to reach place. This is the first one you feel the spray of the water Ukiwanda Niagari. If you don't like the view at the bottom, try the one from the top. There is enough water. In Capedo, we had the hottest shower. Upper, you can have the coldest one. If this fall blows you away, Goja wanted the next one. Now you are ready for the next level. Crazy hairpin turns. As you go up, it can feel like you're going in circles because you are really going in circles. The turns are very tight. One wrong move and it is game over. This truck has some passengers seated at the top. I wonder why. Some passengers prefer to travel on the roof of vehicles, not necessarily to enjoy the scenic view. That is what they call ejector seats to easily bail out just in case the driver decides to take an involuntary shortcut. There are no additional lives in this game. Trucks going down this road carry no heavy loads. The most common means of transport is the motorbike. These work horses carry food produce from the valley below to the people living up. They are the only ones that can safely carry most goods up and down the road. But not just any motorbike operates here. It has to be 125 cc's and above. When you are halfway in the curve section, you get to the tallest waterfall. The water drops about 50 meters from this rock. This road is a great work of engineering as it combines a man-made canal with the road. The canal supplies water to the centers along the road. Before it was built, the canal used to run where the road currently is. On the hillside, there aren't many places to root a canal, so they made it fall over the edges, creating these amazing waterfalls. So the falls don't actually have names because they are man-made. Then, in some section, it runs alongside the road without damaging it. As you near the summit, the rewards just keep rolling. You get a bird's eye view of Sagat Hill and get to view the curves. And then finally, Unafika Hapo Summit at Maron. Ukifika huku unaanza kuona ni kama umefika binguni. Uko juu ya mawingu. Hakuna joto ni baridi tu. Kuna amani na ile ishara kubwa kuwa huku kunaweza kuwa binguni ni kuwa kumejaa kondo kila mahali. Hata wanalala kwa barabara na hawana shida na mtu. I'm not sure it is a coincidence that we found the goats at the bottom of the escarpment and now we have the meek sheep up here in the summit. What you do with that information is totally up to you. 
then you get to realize it is still earth as you get this vehicle which has broken down on the side of the road. Not every car gets to complete these levels. He milima sio mchezo. Hapa ni kusaidiana kwa vile hakuna magari mengi yanapita hii barabara. The worst is over. Or so you may think. <laughs> we are in the highlands and we get to drive past these highland homesteads. Once you are done with the homesteads, it is time to unlock still yet another level, the Embo Boot Forest. This majestic forest is a source of numerous rivers that flow downstream, the most prominent one being the Embo Boot River. A big part of the forest is still intact and this allows for a wonderful drive. Still has the hairpin turns, but without the crazy inclines. Then the party ends and you get into this rough section where the road has dilapidated and what are to say me too, the character development. For about 23 kilometers, you have to enjoy this rough section before getting to Cap Soar. Good news is they have started to fix it from Cap Soar, so hopefully in a few months, the entire section will be good. And that is the story of this amazing road. It is like a game that you keep unlocking a different level. You start in the plains at the foot of the escarpment, you get to go through the security zone, then you hit the tarmac. Just when you're happy with the paved road, you get hit by this crazy incline. Then comes the mist. Then the unclear debris from landslides. Then the crazy hairpin turns. After you summit, you get great views of the surrounding hills and then finally the forest. Sadly, though, this road that was built in 2013 is wasting away. Most of it is in good condition, but with annual landslide debris not getting cleared, it might end up as a digging site for future archaeologists. Hopefully something can be done to stop this. The Sambalat Road is unlike any other in Kenya and has greatly improved the lives of the residents of this remote side of El Geo Maraquet. Hopefully something can be done to maintain this road that is not only unique and amazing, but also a vital lifeline for the people here. This region is very beautiful, but we also have to admit that there are some ugly sights. To wengine wawili wamewawa na wezi wa mifugo karibu na mto Kerio County ya Elgeyo Marakwet huku mama na wanae wawili waliouawa eneo la Sambalat wiki moja iliyopita wakizikwa hii leo. It is true that most of the vehicles you'll run into in this region are security personnel vehicles. But there are still people who can't resist the beauty and charm of this northern frontier. <laughs> uh -huh. But if you decide to visit the area, listen to the police at the various roadblocks to know if it is safe to proceed. I have met with people from some of the communities that live in this region and they all want the same thing. No man, don't say my money. Yeah, man, so do money. So, we've got to utali. If you want money, what I like is it to me. Then the level. Money is a job. Yeah. Amani ita tokeshia wakati sisi fiongosi pamoja na jamii wakika chini na waonge pamoja kuliko italeto amani. I have come to realize that the crocodiles and hippos are not the most dangerous in this region. Since last year, the number of people killed by wildlife in the area is nil. 
Meanwhile, over 50 people have been killed by their fellow man. Just to show you how fleeting peace can be in this region, January this year when we visited Capedo, the residents were upbeat because of the newfound peace. Capedo ni nzuri lakini imekuwa na shida kwa miaka na mikaka. Kwa sababu kumekuwa na vita ya mara kwa mara baina ya wa, uh, um, makabila mawili ambayo wanasosana ambao ni Waturkana na Wapokoti. Ndio. So, watalia wajapata nafasi ya kufika kwa sababu heria haikuwa haifikiki kwa sababu ya vita na kwa sababu ilikuwa ni hatari kuingia. Kwa wakati huu kuna amani, masingira ni mazuri, wataliwa na liko waje waone na waangalie rasilimali nyingi na waangalie vile tunataangamana na majirani yetu kwa uzuri. Usafiri ni nzuri. Yeah. Sadly on the weekend the show ran. Two weeks ago, insecurity made an ugly comeback in the area. Despite the Interior Cabinet Secretary Fred Matiangi ordering a security operation in Kerio Valley to flush out bandits who caused a loss of life, livestock and displacement of hundreds of people, one person has been killed in Capedo along the border of Baringo and Turkana counties in the latest incident today. Outside the town is this field where some of the people rest in here are the victims of this never-ending conflict. If peace is found, it not only means better lives for the inhabitants, but also great opportunities to invest in tourism. The latest attack happened three days ago at the very place we had visited in Chesuman on the episode that ran last week. This area is called Jina Uzito. I don't know if place is called Jina Uzito. Chesuman location. The country woke up to sad news of school learners having been attacked from a school trip excursion and on their way home. Now, where we are standing right here is the scene of crime at Chesuman area. There are measures being put in place to try and improve the lives of the people and bring peace to this troubled region. Infrastructure development is hoped to be one of the key ways to bring peace in the area. The loose surface road from Barwesa in Baringo County to Marich Pass in West Pokot is said to be tarmacked. This means that the entire stretch of the Kerio Valley will have a paved road running through the valley. This will be joined by the B4 highway which is also under construction from Nakuru to Tot, creating a shortcut to West Pokot and Turkana counties. It is hoped that these road projects will open up development in this troubled region. So, parapara ni mzuri. Kwa sababu kila mtu, hata mambo ya development ni taende juu sana. Kwa sababu watu wetu watatakirika, watavata chakula tena bia. If these projects succeed and the area is opened up, then hopefully the security situation will improve for the people here. It will also be much easier for tourists to visit this region. We really need peace to prevail in this region so that we can all enjoy the beauty of these counties. Nimetembea kwingi lakini hakuna mahali pengine kama hapa.